We're joined now by uh, Mr. Bikunle Ogunbai, who is the President's Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria. Corin, thank you for coming this morning. Thank you. Okay, well, first of all, you, yes, there's Corin, but there are people who just wonder, what does Corin do, for instance, because there are complaints here and there, they wonder, does Corin sit back or is it just administrative function? Corin has three mandates. One is to regulate the profession of engineering in Nigeria, and that means to register all engineering personnel, not just engineers, it means technicians, technologists, artisans who practice engineering. So when we give you a certificate, it means you will be registered. Number two is that we also have a control over the curriculum of all the engineering teaching tertiary institutes, the universities, the polytechnics. Really? Uh, yes. And finally, we also have a mandate of ensuring that the engineering practice is properly regulated, which we do through the engineering regulatory and monitoring system. So we've got to be careful that our role is monitoring and regulation. I know you're going to ask me <laughs> about infrastructure, but the truth is... Um, First, let us regulate the practitioners. We also register those who provide consultancy services. I'm saying, mm. unless you're registered by Corin, you cannot be a consulting engineering firm. Do companies know that? Because you have people who, I'm not sure they ask any of those <coughs> engineers or practitioners or artisans, look, are you with Corin? Yeah. They don't. They don't. Is and it they because they don't know? It's Perhaps they don't. It's partly our fault is that we have not been sufficiently proactive in letting people know what we do. And that's why I'm here today, for instance, I hope. Look, if people don't know, you can't blame them. But you know the sad thing is that even those who know still flout the law. We still have governments in this country today who will use unregistered engineering personnel, who will use unregistered consulting firms. So yes, the May the populace may not be fully aware, but certainly every government institution in this country knows because we write to all of them on a regular basis. So what's wrong if I'm, a, I'm an engineer and I'm not registered by Corin and I do a fantastic job for the people? Yes. So why aren't you registered? You should be registered. You should take pride in the fact that you have gone through a process of training and you've gained experience and you are now certified as a competent engineering personnel. You may be a technician, maybe somebody who repairs radios or somebody who is a master builder. Who is a, but the important thing here is, let us be able to say this person is registered. Because it gives confidence to those who use your, your services. Could it be that the services, uh, the fees, uh, perhaps on the high side, you know, people like to dodge some of this and say, whoa, whoa, if these guys are charging me, why don't I go to my friend on the street to do almost the same job, as far as they can see, a little lower a, price? A, again, it's, it's a question of perception. If you are ill and you need to have an operation, you don't go to looking for the cheapest doctor. <laughs> you know, you look for the most competent person. And that's the same thing we should lo do with all our professional practices. If you want a good job, you go to somebody who has the experience and then you do not cringe about making proper payments. You know, uh, we're trying to see if we can actually marry this with uh, uh, developments, infrastructural development in Nigeria. So we're trying to situate this, asking what exactly is the criteria for being a professional engineer? Uh, because uh, quite frankly, Nigerians have greatly disturbed by the amount of uh, decay they see in some of these structures. Uh, some of them, uh, within the shortest uh, time, haven't been completed. You see them go down, collapsed buildings, yeah. bad roads, uh, even when you take it into some other technological uh, uh, discoveries in the country. They say, well, it looks like uh, the engineering profession is uh, now being taken over by quarks. Yeah, look, you've got a lovely place here. Thank you. And you moved in here a year or two ago, anywhere you were before. Now, if you put up this building and then you just leave it, you don't touch it up with paint, you don't fix the door when the hinges fall off, 
you don't repair the air conditioning when it breaks down. It will decay. That has always been the problem with infrastructure in this country. At the level of the federal government, at the level of the state government, at local government level, all the same. You make a budget to build a road, to build a new water pipe, and then you forget that you need to maintain them. So if you don't make allowance for maintenance, or you don't make adequate allowance for maintenance, it will decay. The rule of thumb is, is that if you have a project, 100 Naira, you should set aside every year 4% of that. So every year you should have 4 Naira that you're setting aside towards maintenance. What happens is that in the first few years, you won't need that 4 Naira because it's brand new and it's still under maintenance by the contractor. But you begin to build up a pot of money so that in five or six years time when you have a major repair to do, the money is there and you take it and you repair it. And then you don't wait for the entire thing to collapse before you fix it. If there's a little pothole in a road and you fix it quickly, which the old uh, PWD used to do, pothole, you fix it, it costs you 10 naira. If you leave it and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, before you know it, you're going to need as much money as you used to build the road to fix that pothole. But what you're, what you're saying now is presupposing that the initial job was properly done. Yes. In terms of quality. Oh, yes. Now, the decay, I, I'm, I, I'm now speaking that you've done a good job. We, we can talk about the quality of the road later, but assuming you have a good product, you maintain it and you fix it quickly before it gets bad. Now, the quality of the road itself is another thing. Part of what we found is that the process for project delivery was largely bastardized. It's getting better. You now have the Public Procurement Act, the public, which seems to streamline the process. But there is still a lot of abuse in the system. You have people who will say, this road must have a base of 300 millimeters, a topping of 50 mm, and a wearing surface of 50 mm. And somebody is supposed to go there and measure and make sure that that's what you're getting. But where you have a system that can be bent, a system that is, look, you guys were talking earlier about this guy who got two years for stealing 24 billion naira. <laughs> you know, that is the kind of system that everybody operates under. So, what can Corin do about that? We can't. We can't. If you come to Corin and say, this engineer was in charge of that road and it wasn't properly built, we can't sanction that engineer.